I'd like to welcome you to the afternoon session dedicated to the Lujato Lefebvre equation simulation. So it's dynamics in the nonlinear resonators. And here is a shared plan, like really shared. So first, I've, according to what we discussed yesterday, I decided to make a shared crash course on nonlinear dynamics and resonators. So, and the second part is going to be dedicated to actual simulations. So there are a lot of similarities with what you see in this morning, like uh, I will make some reference to this and uh, so I hope you will go through the code generator solitons in the end of this session. Okay. All right, and so first of all, let's start from the frequency comp themselves. Yeah. So uh, I, I would like to ask you basically, how do you figure out why do we actually have combs in, the, in our system, yes? So who, who, who has a clear idea why on your spectrometer, when you plug your output of the, for example, modlock laser or like the frequency comb where you generate solitons, why do you see these lines, not something else? So maybe you have a clear idea, but it's, uh, it's very, basically very simple yeah, because you have a large sequence, a sequence of many, many pulses together. So for example, you have only one. What, do you see? what, what are you going to see on the... Uh, uh, frequency analyzer, like optical frequency analyzer? It's a question. If it's just one pulse. If it's just one pulse, yes. Yeah, it can be anything, but imagine it's phase locked, yes. So you will see just a spectrum, like a continuous spectrum of this pulse. Yeah? Now imagine that you have two pulses going on. What, what's going on then? So they are c close enough, so you, you're, you're, it's, it's the, the distance between them is much shorter than the time of actually your spectrum analyzer is reacting to pulses. So what do you see on the screen when you have two pulses which are like phase locked with some separation distance? Can you guess? The spectrum is obviously going to be modulated through a temporal interference of the two pulses. Exactly, exactly. So now we add another one, and another one, and another, and another, and it's a large sequence what you're going to add. And this large sequence in the Fourier domain will give you like direct lines equally spaced. So exactly like you can see here on the left. So this sequence of pulses, we can consider it if it's infinite. So you will see that that's Dirac functions equally spaced in your frequency domain. And this, our like ideal perfect frequency column. Yeah? Uh, but of course in real life, it's not like that. So your, your lines are not Dirac, never. So it's related to many factors. And uh, we'll probably discuss them later. So in order to characterize a frequency comb, wherever it comes from, from laser, from micro resonator, you need basically kind of two parameters to characterize it in the frequency domain. So it's like uh, your repetition rate, which is inverse proportional uh, to the time between your pulses in the sequence. Yeah? And so-called the carrier to envelop offset. Yeah? And this carrier to envelop well of offset, offset is related to the phase shift, to the, to the actual field actually, the, shape, the, the, the phase of your actual field inside the, the, the pulse. And so any comb line can be found using this formula on the bottom. So if you want to reach any of them, you just should choose the right end, yes? So they're all equally spaced, but there is this tiny offset in the beginning and there is a spacing. Uh, I guess it's every, everything clear, yes? especially who works with with, uh, with comps already, so you know this quite well. Yeah. So in, in order to like, characterize it, you have to measure. So first, uh, repetition rate frequency, so it's very easy to measure, it's straightforward. You just plug, like you get, for example, a rev beat node or whatever, so you actually extract it quite, quite simply. But in order to access the frequency, as a, as a carrier to envelop offset, you have to make some tricks. So that's why, actually one of the reasons why we would like to have li really large ideally octave spanning combs, and that's why Modlox lasers are still very, very relevant technology because, because of this, because they actually allow you to access these broadband spanning. So, and indeed, so what you do is actually you generate an octave spanning comb, so, and you're just double the frequency of this line, so through some linear, like just linear process, and you can see this is a double. So if you compute the, frequ the frequency of this line with this formula, so yes, you, you will get n, and then you multiply it by two, so you get 2f CO 
plus 2 and f ref. Yeah? But here is going to be just f co plus 2 and f ref. So you see, and just taking the difference between these two lines, you extract exactly the, the carrier to envelope offset. That's a simple thing. And got a good reward. Yeah? So we all know this, there's a Nobel Prize uh, title related to this technology, frequency comps in 2005, uh, and uh, apparently, so at that time, the Modlock laser were like the number one technology, but at the moment, and uh, uh, of course, like they're still relevant, but they're quite bulky, they take a lot of space in the lab, so it's a technology which stays in the lab most of the time, because you cannot transport all these things, for example, yeah? uh, but not, not so recently, but still recently. We introduce the micro re resonators. So this is just micro thing. So you, you can actually see them over there. So it's typical micro resonator, how it looks like. So, and this tiny device allows us to access the frequency comp really, really small scale. So everything you need, basically, it's a very stable single mode laser to pump it, like tunable single mode laser to pump it. And you actually get the frequency comp, like, almost for free. So you just, uh, through nonlinear process, you'll generate this. But we'll talk about this a bit later. It's just over a part, yeah. Uh, so, and, okay, in 2007, it was shown uh, that actually it is possible, like this technology is, is actually working. So, and that's, of course, made a big breakthrough there at the time. But the real breakthrough actually came when the, uh, when researchers discovered the possibility to generate solitons in this kind of micro resonators. So the concept of soliton, you already familiar, I guess, after this morning lecture uh, or even before. But this is something really particular, uh, really, really handy for the applications because it gives you a coherent comp, like stable coherent comp and ultra broadband also. That's, that's uh, the thing. We will talk about all this figure years later that now there are lots of platforms where this can be implemented. Every platform has its strong side and like the weak side. We here in the PFL works, we work uh, usually with silicon nitride, nitri so you simulated this, this material, this exact material yesterday, the console session and yeah, so, and even after. And because of this kind of shared size, or like small size, you can actually expand the application. So you, you can uh, really go around and you see that in recent, in the past like few years, you got number of articles related to, in, 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 in high-end high journals like uh, who, uh, that explain how to make this actually useful. And so actually this technology can be really bro be like, uh, implemented on cheap because they're really small size. They're micro resonators, like from uh, which they exactly for their size. So, and uh, because of this, now we will probably speak about how to simulate them because apparently it's a very important technology, and we want to know how it works, what it gives in the end, in order to be able to produce them quite exactly. So, and expect uh, get, get some expectation of what you can get there. So in order to simulate the dynamics of light, such system, you actually get three approaches usually. Don't be scared, so it's just to highlight the approaches. So first of all, one of them maybe you're already familiar, it's called the Kedem mapping. You can recognize here, uh, just on the top, it is the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, which you just studied. You simulated its, uh, its generalized version just today, this morning. Yeah? So, but then you should just get the right uh, boundary conditions in this because it's like it's periodic and never, every round trip should, you should add some, something. We will we'll get to this moment closer. Another one thing is actually that you, in, in your resonator, in frequency domain, you get the discrete modes yeah, because your uh, resonator is frequency selecting. Yeah. Selective, so you can write something similar, but in Fourier domain. And here is a four-wave mixing term. I'm sorry, I just wanted to have a which one? This. This. 
Okay, so so error and. Uh, Okay, it doesn't matter. It just let, let, let's continue without it. I'm okay. Are you sure? Oh, sure, sure. They all work. Uh, so. Okay, so uh, the coupled mode equation. So here, actually, you can see this term, which is a very complicated sum of many many things, is actually it is the four wave mixing. So this term, actually, you we will see it probably later. So this term actually shows all possible four-wave mixing between different combines. So we get many, and there is this nonlinear process, so two photons come together, two photons go out, so, and this takes into the account every possible. So that's why some is very complicated. No one simulates this, the, the resonator in this way today. So like just in the very beginning they tried, but it's really time consuming, we will not even try. Yeah. So, and the one you probably know is called Lugiat Lefebvre equation. This term basically came from the dissipative nonlinear dynamics, which like, uh, was used in uh, different chemistry domains first, and then transferred to, to, to physics, to optics. And this Lugiat Lefebvre equation is what we're going to dedicate our time today. So uh, we will try to go and understand every term in very details and actually simulate this in the end. So let's go ahead. So this morning you got a waveguide, you launched some light inside and you saw how, the, how it actually propagates, what is the, what is the nonlinear like interaction, interplay between nonlinear and dispersive terms, how, how it works, so what, what is going on. So and in a very, very simple case, very simple case. Nonlinear Schrodinger equation is valid in, in this, in this uh, waveguide. So when you have low power, for example, that can be a, your case. So, but now let's imagine that you have, so you have a ring. Yeah? So basically nothing stops us to say, okay, inside this ring, nonlinear Schrodinger equation valid as well. Yes? So it's valid. And uh, there's only one thing, we have to add some light inside because like, of course it's going to be dissipating. So we got a bus waveguide. We call it by wave guys. So we inject the fill here. There is some coupling section which we simulated yesterday afternoon in, in numerical. So you're all already familiar with this. Yeah. And so we will launch some lights and light propagates and light, let, let's write equation for this light, uh, how it looks like. So this is nothing but the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Okay. So but M here stands for the M's round trip inside the loop. So you get light. We pass once, twice, and then in the nth time we write this, for example, yeah. And um, so, but there is there is more about. So here there is a term. Who can say what is this actually? From just looking for the, to the term. I'm sorry. Attenuation. Yeah, it's dumb. Of course, yes. So uh, it's pretty easy because of course you get many, many, many cycles inside the loop. So and you get some dissipation, like of course. Uh, so what do we do next? So the field on the m plus one round trip equals to what? So apparently we get some field in, it goes through the coupler, yeah, and it meets the light just, just before on the previous round trip. So light went one pass here, so you actually can see the part of that light gets out, yep, and another part from pump comes in, so they join, and the field on the next round trip is related to the field on the previous round trip and your pump, so it's pretty easy. Yes? Exactly, Mikhail, perfect. Per perfect, thank you. So, <laughs> all right. So let, let's go. Let's go next. Let's go next. So now it comes a very important part. So what actually makes the ring like? What? what why we actually we are able to simulate the ring with a simple model? Because actually it's quite complicated. You can imagine. So you have losses. Yeah. You have this coupling. Light goes in. Light goes out. There is no linear dynamics inside. But all this, all this is supposed to be very complicated. But we have one equation in the end. And of course, we have to make some assumptions. Yeah? Without this, it's just not possible. So that's our assumptions. So what do they tell you here? So
So uh, over one round trip time, you got small losses. That's the first thing that we, 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 we want to get into the account. Yeah, the coupling is also should be quite small. Also, your light, uh, the nonlinear dynamics and like dispersive and linear dynamics together, they do not act a lot. So basically what we say, there is a typical dispersive and typical nonlinear lens inside your waveguide, any waveguide. Yes, it's from fiber optics cars, if you have had it. So it's actually, I think if I'm not mistaken, so, so this is your nonlinear lens, how you estimate it, yes. And uh, dispersive is like your typical time divided by beta 2. So all this you already seen many times, yes. So what do you say that is less this kind of your, your propagation lens divided by this value is much less than one. Well, it exactly means that the nonlinear effects, they're small enough to not change almost anything during one round trip. So the ring is small, yes. Yeah, so say, okay, I have a small ring, I don't have too much power, but, and in the end, it gives us a very nice limit up there, and it's very powerful, so we can actually exploit heavily that we're going to do right now. So the trick is, following. So we say, okay, I want to know how my field looks like in the end of one round trip. So I had something here in the very beginning. It propagated the whole ring, and I want to know how it looks like in the end, yeah? So apparently, something like this, and it's just a Taylor expansion, like first term. So we say, actually, it's so small, the changing due to the nonlinear effects, that we can write it in this way. So this L is like length of your ring, and here is like first term from this kind of linear sharing equation. So, and this actually kind of a Taylor expansion. And we can apply this Taylor expansion only because of these limits. Okay? And uh, so what we do is actually we say, okay, so we know what is this. So just right there. We know what is this. Yeah? So this done just from here. So we substitute it. It's one step, calculation. And you got all this nice expression, yeah? Who can follow? Yeah. Uh, what's the C mass? Okay, you said R, R plus CR. Yeah, but you, 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 yeah, yeah, sure. You have, you, you have some uh, kind of like acquired phase during the round, isn't it? So because your light actually propagated there, so you acquire a phase, and that just takes into account this. Uh, okay, so how do we get to this equation? So that's our main equation. That's, that's the question what we're going to study today. There is only one step basically missing here. Um, and this one step is following. So we want to write, we want to write the, this derivative term on the bottom, like the first derivative term here. So it, it's what we call a slow time in this kind of, in our community. So how do we deal with this? So we actually say, okay, this, this guy, this, those guys are like, they're discrete. Yes, you have round trips, you have like one, two, three, four, but everything changes so slowly that almost there is no difference between just two round trips, yeah? And that actually allows us to say, okay, so if everything changes so small, so if I take, yeah, uh, I, I take it on, on one side, um, uh, on, on next round trip minus on previous round trip, yeah? And uh, I can say, okay, that that's can be represented as a derivative. So it's so small that it's like, it's considered that small that it can be taken as a derivative limit, actually. And we write, and we write this term. That's the last trick. So, Basically, okay, that's our derivative due to the small changes, like it's dynamics in slow times, of course. This, our nonlinear Schrodinger equation, yeah, everyone recognizes it here. And here, we got additional sections. So this here is actually, this is a term which, which we call detuning. This is a term which you can see actually represent the losses, so it's like like just resonator scattering and this coupling section. And here, you got a pump term, and that's it. Yeah. So, and all this allows us to simulate 
the ring. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, so it's there, so it's 2PL minus L. So if you divide it by TR, then you get our disunion, which we get used to. So that's how you derive all these things. So it's actually, uh, it will be later, so you will see it. And here I would like to bring back all the assumptions we did deriving this. Uh, so here's the outline. So slowly worrying envelope. Do you know where it comes from, actually? Slowly worrying envelope. Why we should we, we definitely should have it. So and what it means in our case, it's very very common limits in actually as it's written, it comes from comes from comes from NLS. So from linear sharing equation. In order to derive it, we already have to yeah. take this limit. Yeah? And do you remember why and what what it brings? Amazing. So, <laughs> so yes, exactly. That's that's very easy. So actually, of course, like when you when you when you got this expansion, you got first and second derivative, and saying that it's slowly worrying. And why it's always valid in our case? Can you say it's also it's also a picture? Just just pronounce it. I want you to wake up a little bit. Oh no no no! That's already in LLE physics. Yeah, but here it's. Pure NLS physics, nonlinear sharing equation. Why, why it should, why, why it's always valid in optics? Oh, no, I mean in optics. Yes. It's it's a picture just below. So. It's not on purpose, but it's small. It's not more. Yes. Uh, you have so many wave functions inside the envelope. You have oscillations of field. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you're you're actually. Looking, you know, linear sharing equation is not written for the f actual field. It's written for envelope of your field. Yeah. So in the linear sharing equation, we put that shape, the the orange one, and not for the blue. Yeah. And actual field, imagine it has a time. Uh, I think in 1550, it's around four femtosecond or five femtosecond one oscillation. But we always consider pulses much, much, much longer than this. Yeah. So we'll go up to picoseconds usually, or like hundreds of femtoseconds. So we have a lot of oscillations of field inside, and that's our first limit. And it's really in the basics of derivation of, of nonlinear Schrodinger. Okay. So next, uh, this limit we just discussed. Yes. So you need to have your field changing slowly from round trip to round trip. So nothing changed. So we actually can replace the discrete e e EM by the derivative. That's the kind of thing uh, we have to do. And uh, so another one important point which we did discuss. So if you look at the just linear case, if you tune very broadly over your resonator, like you have resonators, you inject monochromatic pump, yeah? Very low power. Uh, for example, your resonator so good is almost dispersionless. So what you will see? Like if you tune really broadly, monochromatic pump, tune, yeah, you inject, so you will look at the transmission. What you will see in the transmission trace over the time of tuning, yeah. Exactly, so of course, your resonator is frequency selective. It's going to be like that, one deep, another deep. So it's your resonances, yeah, of course. And uh, what, what, what happens, so we will go to this point later, your resonances, when you have a care nonlinearity, they're going to tilt. Yeah. And if they're too close, so they tilt one on top of another. Yeah. And you got, in, if it's one, it's called bistability. So you've got two stable branches. We'll discuss this later. But if there are many together, it's called multi-stability and this much more complex thing and, non, and, and, and <coughs> Lugiato Lefebvre equation cannot take this into account because you took the limit of small losses actually is, is uh, so it, it just doesn't doesn't work uh, we have to take care of this also and another one thing I don't know if we discussed this this morning but actually uh, in usual if you if you write your nonlinear Schrodinger in laboratory system yes so you have your your 
like you have your your waveguide, you inject a pulse, and actually pulse has a group velocity, yes. And if you if what you simulated this morning, this guy did not have usually the group velocity if everything is perfect. Yes? If there is no Raman, if there is no beta three or something like this, this guy stays in the window. Why? You see, this morning yeah, you remember your simulations. If everything is okay, so nothing disturbs your soliton, it just stays fixed in your window, you remember. Yeah? But why? What, what do we do? Because of course it doesn't stay inside the, the, the waveguide. Yeah, it moves. So, so Exactly. That's the thing. So what do we do actually in Schrodinger equation? So we we move our frame where we look together with the pulse, with the group velocity of the pulse. Yes, so we don't need to simulate this, so we just fix our window and we move it together with the pulse. Exactly the same thing happens here. But of course, we don't just move, we rotate. Yeah. And so our, like you can imagine our camera looks on top of the, of the pulse inside your ring, just moving like that. So you actually don't need to don't need to go and look at the laboratory system because it's a nightmare. It's like very high velocity and all things. So you, you, you move with a group velocity. So your soliton, if no, nothing disturbs it, stays straight. Yeah. So, okay. I hope it was not too much. So, because we, we, we still need a bit more of real thinking. So, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit dense slide, but Let's just go and look at every term one after another. So you already know these things, yeah? Because you know the linear sharing equation. So we look here and what we see. So first, of course, it's losses. That's the last term. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's given by this, this ratio. So it's written for power, yeah? So it's like, it's increment of your power decay. Okay, it's defined in this way. Uh, so these terms goes here. This term goes here. Yeah? So then another one thing. So you got like a detuning, uh, which you, which is uh, which is written just right there. So we change the the variable now. Before it was written the explicitly, but now it's just variable delta. Uh, so the dispersion term you you know perfectly you know, the, because you just simulated. Uh, the uh, super continuum, and it's exactly what you need. You need to know all this Taylor expansion. Yeah? So basically, your effective refractive, refractive index depends on, 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 on your frequency. So you Taylor expand it, and you substitute to the equation. Yeah. Okay, that's already we know also. A nonlinear coefficient, and uh, that's the expression, but you can imagine how it works, basically. So this is related to, uh, it's like, it's high three susceptibility. So it actually means that your story depends on your intensity of your pulse. So you can see it actually like your pulse moving through some waveguide or moving through like your, your, your resonator and it modulates for you himself the refractive index because of the power. Like, yeah, more intensity, more modulation. So it changes the refractive index so it's a quieter phase. Okay, and now here you can recognize something which you briefly did in the very end of the console session yesterday morning. So you, when you had your waveguide and you saw the mod profile, yeah, so you actually could just go and directly calculate this coefficient there in console. So that's why we actually really need console, yeah? So it's just not only dispersion, it's also this and many things. So that's why console is so handy and we actually dedicated the whole session to console, okay? And this formulation of, of LLE equation, we call it a coin formulation in our like, community, more or less, because uh, here is like one of the first who introduced it in the fiber optics way, so with beta two and all the things. Uh, so, but actually, so everything is clear about these equations, so it should be super clear. No, who, who has problems? Let's, let's discuss. Who does understand? Can you raise your hand, please? I would say I understand the terms, but not the combination. 
yeah, of course. I mean, combination is super complex. Of course. It's always like this, you see. Then linear, or the, the, the partial differential equations, they, they are quite easy to, to fill, yeah, because you get one term, you just forget others, and you see how it works. You forget, other, you take other term, you forget, uh, you, you, you exclude others, you see how it works. It's simple. When you bring everything together, it's starting to be super complicated, and we will, we will see actually how it looks like. Okay, uh, so guys, who, 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 who did not raise hands? So what, 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 what is actually the complicated part about this equation? What, what do you think? Effective mode area, yeah, okay. Uh, that's what you actually, that's what you, what you actually got got yesterday, yes, but it's, uh, it's basically, because not every part of your field, yeah, contributing equally, because you get some profile, okay, so, and uh, that's uh, like in brief, in a short way saying that's a way to estimate effectively where you have to like cut your, your reason, but yeah, that's actually fine.
but now it's proportional to number of photons actually. So and we all uh, talk now in terms of uh, in these terms and also uh, care coefficient. So here we, we call it uh, J naught. So we we call, we, uh, we call it J naught, and uh, it's a care shift per photon. So you see, we we all renormalize uh, re this kind of thing to talk about photons in the cavity because in a way it's way more. It, it, yeah, it's, it's way more handy in the micro resonator. And it's like uh, every other parameter can be easily expressed in terms of these ones. Uh, so yeah, here you recognize your kappa x is actually one you got in the numerical session yesterday. Um, uh, okay, and the the thing which we tried to understand yesterday quite heavily in the end of the session is integrated dispersion. Who understood what is integration dispersion? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. So let, let, let's, let's, let's think. So uh, in, imagine, so you have, you have a cavity. So you have discrete number of like resonances there. Yeah? But when you introduce, the, when it's dispersion is there, it could distance. There's nothing to change it because you acquire certain phase. If like the interference condition is, is satisfied, so you got your field going through, uh, and if not, so it, it doesn't. And uh, what happens if you introduce a dispersion? So different frequency will have different acquire different phase during the propagation, and that's what you see. So every the, uh, that's that's where like the, the, this line, the, the black line, represents where it should be, and uh, the, the, the blue one represents where it is when there is a dispersion. Okay, so who's, who, who understood this? That, that's quite a simple point. So every frequency acquired different phase because of this, because it feels different refractive coefficient inside the cavity. Actually, that's what what it is. Um, and so your resonance is shifted from the position where it should be. Uh, and of course, it's very natural somehow and very nice to. To, 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 to talk about this dispersion in very simple terms. So it's how far your resonance from the place where it should be if there is no dispersion. Okay, so that's simply it, there is nothing more. So you, you actually, you get, you calculate this distance, you plot it here, calculate this distance, you plot it here, calculate this distance, you plot it here. Yeah. So, and you got your dispersion profile, which is discrete in a way, because there are a discrete number of, of moles in the, in the cavity. Okay, and of course, uh, every parameter like D1 and D2 here, they can be expressed in terms of the fiber optic parameters beta, beta 2 and like beta 1. So actually this kind of very handy formulas to recalculate one from another and the and inverse. And like yesterday, the final result of our whole console session was an integrated dispersion profile. So you remember uh, this kind of, we got this kind of parabola, but actually we got more terms. So parabola was not symmetric and actually it crossed like zero twice. So, and we will probably come back today to this and see what it gives in real life actually when you simulate it. Yeah. Okay, um, a bit more mathematics. Like at, I, I think it's the last dense slide so, very nice thing about the Lee uh, Lujatli Ferrer equation is following. So you can make a change of variables, like very simple thing. So you renormalize your slow time, you renormalize your 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 like fast time or like angle inside the resonator. Like we we work with both. You renormalize your detuning, you renormalize your field, and you renormalize your pump term. So and now LLE looks like this. So it's, it's super simple. There are no additional terms, and you can see that everything what happens in this super complicated system can be described using two parameters: this one, which is effective detuning, and this one, it's like effective pump. So everything what happens there can be mapped on two-dimensional space. And one you have this effective power, and here it's effective detuning, effective pump, and effective detuning. Okay, so and every resonator can be normalized and have its place in this kind of two-dimensional diagram, where 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 you what kind of and then using this you can actually easily estimate what kind of power you should use, 
but how far you should tune your laser in order to achieve certain state you want. And we will see in the end of the session um, actually how far, you, uh, how it looks like this diagram. Yeah? So I think this, this thing I will skip briefly. Uh, it's explaining how you should adjust kappa x and kappa naught, which is like your internal losses and external losses. If they're equal, is the best situation because then your deep in the resonator like goes down towards towards zero, so the transmission is optimal. Okay, and the main characteristic that you should remember, and everyone who talked ever about the resonators, like they think about these two terms. Inter the, like it's a uh, who knows who is this? Actually, it's it's written. No, it's not written. But who can recognize what is on the left, what is on the right? Where's quality factor? <laughs> yeah, quality factor, and this. It's an S, okay, so there are, two, there are two things, and basically everyone who's ever speak about resonators, they will first ask you what is your quality factor. Yeah. So that always works in this way, and you have to know these this two values. And actually, all the problems we got before, it was related to the fact that we could not generate the good quality, uh, create a good quality factor resonators. Yes? Yeah, imagine, so you have omega, omega node divided by kappa. Eh? So a bit later we will learn actually that kappa defines the width of your resonance, for example. Yeah? So it's got Lorentzian shape, but how wide is it is related to your kappa. It's, 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 directly, it's directly related to this. Yeah? So for equal resonators, different quality factors basically mean, uh, like for equal resonators, different quality factors means how different is your width of the resonance. That's a crucial uh, parameter in this kind of resonator story. Okay, so it's time to analyze the equation. So let's, I'm sorry? It's, it's called finesse. So imagine if you have resonators with equal FSRs, like free spectral ranges, yeah? So they got equal spacing. Yeah. So actually you plot for different finesse, so you will got equally spaced but different in a way uh, with, so that's that's how it works in, in, in this story. You can see it here actually, that's quite handy to understand finance. Uh, just look. It's just really easy to understand it as a number of round feet of the, of the quantum light. Finance, right? The quality factor. No, no. Okay. <laughs> okay, probably or l let's move it further so we are very bit out of time. So uh, let's analyze this briefly. So if you forget these three terms, yeah, and you can write, it's super simple, you just write this, yes, and you take modulus square. So actually, that that's directly shows you why do you have Lorentzian shape? Because, because this guy is kind of Lorentzian, yes, something, one plus, and here is, 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 your, is, is your variable. And the width of this Lorentzian is here. It's your kappa, that's why like, all this is related, you see? So you, your, 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 your kappa is one over photon lifetime, so then you actually can think of this term. So faster you lose photons, wider is your resonance, and all, all this kind of thing. Uh, another story, so if, if we forget just two, so we keep the linear term. So what happens? So your Lorentzian resonance get into tilt. So it it's just goes like this, and you will actually simulate it today, I guess, uh, in the exercise session, how it works. So I will not go into much details, but uh, what you should understand, so you got simple equation after all, and you can uh, find that there are two stable branches in a way where your solution can exist in this case. And if you tune your laser frequency from left to right, like 
from blue to red, from blue frequency to red frequency, yeah? So you will go over this resonance, yes? And you can see, and we will see later where it leads. Uh, but if you go from other side, your resonance still tilt in this direction, so you jumped over it right away. So that's why we can tune more or less in one direction in our resonator story. And so, imagine, so now you have a resonator, so it's fully nonlinear, it's, uh, it has a dispersion, yeah? And so we take our laser, we go there, we search for a resonance, and we tune, uh, we tune over it, and people found out that it looks like this. So what is going on here? So you got first some kind of the oscillations, like your field inside, it's a field inside the cavity, yes? Like more of a square field. And so it's, it's, your, it's your ring resonator. And the first, what happens? Your like, field starting to be modulated in this way. And that's what we call Turing patterns or Turing rolls. Yeah, so, and uh, what's going on later uh, then? So you tune over and your solution becomes unstable. So it's what we call modulation instability. So it's, it's very, very close to modulation stability in the linear Schrodinger equation. So uh, how it works. So if you have a in, in simple nonlinear Schrodinger, okay? So there is nothing more. So just nonlinear Schrodinger. So you inject a plane wave. So it's CW laser, yeah? It always has some noise, yeah? Wherever, more or less. So for example, you had amplifier before, so you have quite a lot of noise. So you got this perturbation on top of your CW. You can imagine what I draw is, is uh, so like this. Yeah. So you, you get your CW level and some noise. And what's going on in nonlinear Schrodinger? This, this stuff becomes unstable. So you start, the, the, the new harmonics are starting to grow exponentially. So your spectrum If you will draw, so there are like parts, uh, they look like wings. And if your noise is inside this, this, this region in frequency, it will amplify exponentially. It will be amplified exponentially. So, and here was what, exactly what's going on. So this stuff becomes unstable. It starts to be noisy and uh, uh, you, know, you generate a noisy comp. And that's what was actually generated first in uh, 2007. So the comp from 2007 from Nature paper was noisy. So it was uh, obtained exactly in this, in this stage. So there's no coherence in this. I mean, you still get comps because, of course, even if uh, your comp is noisy, it's still periodic, yes? Because every time you make another round trip, it changes quite slowly. So you, your output is periodic. So any periodic output will generate you comps. But now, your, your comb lines are moving like this, so phase is changing and everything is changing, so you don't want this, of course, yeah? And in, what, what happened in 2014 is that actually they tuned further, they managed to make a good quality resonators because before it was not possible, so even with exactly this quality factor, increasing quality factor, allows them to tune longer in this direction and uh, generate solitons. So, and solitons in this case, what is this? It's just like a pulse-like structure which circulates and it's fully coherent. So it's the same soliton, it's stable and it turns and here how it looks like in the transmission trace. So you see, so in, in when there is no dispersion, non-linearity, you go and get a simple Lorentzian, then you add your non-linearity, this thing tilts, then you combine all these two together and that's what you see. Uh, so it's totally not a simple story. And uh, uh, yes, and it's very crucial today to be able to access this state because this here is all modern resonator technology lies. So of course, uh, you want to get a very stable, very coherent comp, and this is the secret. You should go there, search for them. What is a soliton? So soliton is very close to the soliton of nonlinear Schrodinger equation. But the nonlinear Schrodinger equation, you get dispersion and linearity only. Yeah? So soliton is a balance between these two. So actually, these two, cur these two stuff, uh, nonlinear lens and dispersion, dispersion lens, they should be equal. 
in order to get soliton, actually. That's the criteria for soliton. But here we have another thing. We have much more terms. And also, uh, here we have also losses. And we, we pump resonator continuously, yes? So we, we actually, through, because of the parametric processes, we got some sort of amplification. So this soliton is uh, some sort of balance between nonlinearity, dispersion, losses, and gain. So it's like really, really particular thing. And because we have losses and gain, it's called gain, it's called dissipative soliton, dissipative Kerr soliton, or DKS. So how we how we call it in our community very often. Uh, okay. And here is spectrum actually. So your soliton is seconds hyperbolic on the background, but uh, seconds hyperbolic is kind of not invariant in Fourier, but seconds hyperbolic. Fourier of sequence hyperbolic is seconds hyperbolic. So if you have this kind of structure in real domain, frequency domain, you will have some sort of the same shape. And so, but now, of course, you have every comb line here. And your bit node, your RF frequency bit node, is very, very, very narrow. And that was happened in 2014. This is how it looks like. So that's your intracavity field resolved. Like, uh, so you got. Uh, here is theta is angle inside, it's angle inside your resonator, but don't forget we move with the group velocity of all this stuff. Yes, so this, that's why your soliton is actually doesn't move, but actually of course it's circulating around, but you move uh, your like view together with its group velocity. Okay, so how do we see it? Here is it's it's a slow time. Yeah, so what what is going on? You tune your laser frequency slowly. That's that's your detuning. Yes. This, this red thing. So you, you change it slowly, and your cavity is starting to have a build up, so your energy goes through because you're close to the resonance. Yeah? Then you generate this kind of periodic pattern, which is called Turing pattern. Then it becomes modulationally unstable. So you got all this kind of chaos, and it's real chaos in, in the right terms, so it's characterized. And after this, you got this breathing state. And you go stable soliton. So, and every uh, like these st steps can be estimated. So, for example, the length of your soliton can be just given by this simple formula in normalized units, of course. Yeah. Um, okay. So, and here is the phase diagram, as I promised. It's the very last slide for 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 theoretical part. So now you see. Every single state in this resonator can be mapped here. Yeah, so you take your LED equation, if it's valid, you normalize it, and okay, you say okay. So now I have this f to f square and this delta, so it's normalized its unit. So if I want to go soliton, yes, where I should pump, like here, there. So you find this, and you go through breather station, and you stop here. Yeah, so and you find your soliton. It's actually a bit more complex than it's written. Uh, then it's drawn here, so uh, we got here more chaotic stages and all stuff, but it's a detail. So what I want to bring you as a knowledge of today that like dynamics inside a care resonator can be described, good quality resonator, like can be described by lujato lefebvre equation. lujato lefebvre equation can be normalized that there are only two units which, that does, which, which matter, yeah? So it's like normalized detuning and normalized pump power. So every single state can be described in this term. That's, that's, that's what I want you to uh, remember. So, okay. Okay, so as I promised, that's it. Uh, and uh, let's try to look at the cause. Yeah. So first of all, I would like you to go and uh, if you haven't downloaded it yet, um, I haven't downloaded it yet, so there is lecture part two, just over there, there is like... Anyone had problems with the anaconda distribution, all these things? Everything's okay? Perfect. Okay, if you open it, now you see there are two, there are two folders. Oh, there are two files, yeah? 
So you copy them all on your own disk. You go open your anaconda. There you choose spider. So it's like a shell to work with Python in a convenient way. What you should see is this. Who already opened? Okay, I will. So it's here, just like, yeah. Two. Okay, when it's ready, please raise your hand, like, so I, I know if you wait or not. Okay, one, we got one, two, okay, three, four, okay, good. You, ha you have some problems? Maybe oh, I no, no, it's just, I'm just running it. Ah, you're running? No, 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 you just should open. That's oh, okay, all right, let me. Ah, you open, so, so please raise your hand when you open it. Have another computer? Do we have another computer, Mish? So okay, sure. Yeah, you can, but now you can just follow on my screen, probably. So I will uh, just describe the what is inside. So it's like it's, it's it's just more or less following. So it's more convenient to follow if you see it here. But if it's visible for you, it's, it's okay. So it's not yet the programming part. So we. Okay, so for uh, so can can everyone just who finished raise their hand? So I see. Oh, who doesn't? Or like no no no, sorry, who did? Okay, yeah yeah. Oh, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hands, please, please, please. Okay, so we have just just one person here. So you're okay. Everything works. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you, you see where you find it, yes? Exercises? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, so guys, for this thing, we, we, we wrote a short script in order like, to, not, to not go there. So now let's run it, yeah? So what you see here is a progress bar in the bottom, yes? Here you can see like your F square normalized parameter and your detuning range, okay? And that's the time which we compute this kind of thing. So everything works, you run, yeah? Okay, so while it's running, let's go and look through what is here. So first we include some libraries, like that's okay, that's standard thing, that's our software actually, which we wrote. Can, can you follow on my screen, do you see? Yeah. In, on the last row, can you see, Miles, can you see? Yeah. Can you see, it's okay? Uh, so my, my screen. All right. Okay, I see. Maybe you don't need to. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, okay, sure. I, I finish, we will get a short break. Like, we'll go out for coffee and we go back. It's already there, so Ten minutes. You have to decide. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so here, what we got? What we got? So it's pretty simple. So you have to define your range, so your box, yeah? How many points are in your box? That's, we, 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 we chose this. It's, it's quite good to choose the power of two because it, it speeds up your fast Fourier transform, actually. So that's, that's, that's one thing. We will use it quite heavily in these simulations. Uh, here, it's a D2. So it's a parameter which you actually got yesterday morning. Like, it's not exact, but uh, just for, like, showing 
how it works. You, you can take this one and uh, I've chosen like average resonator 15, it's quite good, good whatsoever, yeah. Okay, so here you define moles. So uh, basically you say that in your resonator, gonna be two to the power seven moles. Okay, that's it. Uh, here is your integrated dispersion. If you remember the formula of integrated dispersion, yeah, so it's just this. And there is nothing more. Mu is your moles. Don't forget, it's discrete moles, like minus, like, yeah. So here's your detuning range, okay? So here is your detuning range, and uh, you define it in a way. So more important to look at the normalized one. So here, you can see it's from minus eight, to 12. So you, what, what is important? It's important to tune over your resonance, yeah? So to not miss, not too, not too late, not, no, you, should, you should be right before to have some certain gap to get, to get the right build up of the cavity. And then you go there and you will see how it works, okay? So here it's number of points in slow time. So here we define the number of points inside your box, which we simulate. And here, how many outputs we will get out, out of our solver, okay? Uh, this parameter we will discuss later. This, I, I, I actually make my detuning out of these values. Yeah, there is nothing, nothing more. And here, I actually give the, the real parameters of a resonator. It's like any, yeah, so we, 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 we got this. It's terahertz resonator, standard thing, and silicon nitrate, and all this story, so. Um, yeah, that's it. And also here we implemented the frequency dependence of, of, of your coupling. So yesterday we calculated on the numerical session that actually if you have a resonator, we, di we didn't do it explicitly, but uh, the first part of the lecture showed you actually that we got the model of resonator. And of course, if you have a broadband comp, your coupling will not be the same for every frequency that we expect. Yeah. And here we got simple approximation, just some uh, close to a real experimental parameter here. So your coupling is not the same for every frequency. Okay, and here is the parameters. So that's a slow time, so slow time in seconds actually. So we got two microseconds of simulations. And uh, here is our array, which we defined like right here, yeah. It's our detuning array. Uh, here is noise. That's actually very important. So, uh, in very good case, if you using a very good laser, so what your your noise level is going to be your shot noise, just a shot noise in the system. So it's, it has actually quantum nature. So it, it is in perfect case, but usually we're far from perfect. So we we estimate it's this uh, noise level is falling. Okay. Uh, here is uh, some, some detail for, for a solver, and here is like internal, internal steps of a solver which I define. Okay. Here we choose the power, uh, we go not too high, uh, so we define the power rate. We d here is the, um, yeah, so here is, we, we, we actually get our class. It's our class, it's called Resonator. Okay and we construct a class by providing him uh, parameters of the resonator. So we basically construct a class here. And here is your simulation. So w one line, and we will see what's behind this line. Uh, so you got this, and if you, if you clicked on simulation, that's what you saw, okay. For example, because actually everyone should get a different, slightly different picture because I, or you can get solitons. Here is a soliton, or not. Uh, have, have you taken also the, the window? In a window? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe this is the thing. My one, my one does it inside the con console. I think you've got to change the back end. Oh, yeah, yeah, look, so you go here, preferences, if you have the same problem. If your picture, if you have all your figures are in cons console, so you go here, Python console, graphics, and here you change to QD, QD5, for example. Okay. And you should reload your, 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 anacon, uh, your, your spider. So you, and when, once you reload it, you will get it okay, I think. Okay, uh, so I hope everyone managed to follow. So 
this figure you already seen, yeah? Kind of. So you got your cavity build up here. You got your modulation stability, these parts. Then there is a breathing part and your solid on step. Yeah, so here solid on actually layers. And uh, okay, this we can close probably. This graph shows you how your dint looks like. So since we use only D2, ah, it's a perfect parabola. Yeah, of course, there is nothing more than this. Uh, later we will simulate what happens if you add more terms. Uh, so here, <coughs> here is like detuning, how we change it. So it's linear. I, I, we didn't do a lot. Uh, and here it's interactive. So you can actually go and explore these phase, phase uh, uh, all these par all parameters just by clicking. So you go and you can see how your solitons are breathing and then they got to a stable state. Yeah. So here you are. And who actually can say why do we have a non-zero velocity of soliton? Because before in all figures it was straight, yeah? So what do you think? We got one trick there. Just one trick, which is like broke a symmetry. Uh, maybe it's because the soliton does frequency shift that changes the group along the. Okay, no, no, that's a pure LED without any like uh, without any high order terms. No. No, there is no. I'm sorry. No, no. Before it was con it was not constant. Also, so all this all this time we go and change the detuning. Actually, we stop somewhere in the end, but it's another story. Okay, some other ideas. Let's look through the code. What is what what can pose the symmetry here? So, okay, this is <laughs> this is detuning. Yeah, uh, that's nothing 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 more. <laughs> Here we have only D2, so it's perfectly symmetric parabola. No, nothing. Okay, so what, what, what else? What, what, what's there? Probably something here. Okay, so that's this graph, which I plotted just right here. Can you see it? Can you, can you, can you see what is there? Like this term, what is this? Can you? So that, that's it. That's uh, your kappa x. So because different frequency, different, different frequency fill different coupling. Yeah? You break symmetry there because you're, here is your coupling term uh, plotted. So it's slightly changing, actually. So you see the scale. It's not too much, yeah? but it's like a few percent. But still, different part of your spectrum feel different coupling. And of course, your spectrum now is not balanced. So your one part of your frequency of oh, spectrum has more energy than another. So asymmetry in the spectrum leads to the non-zero group velocity. That's, that's just it, so you break symmetry. So with D3, if you will add more, you will also break symmetry and you will see how it, act, how it affects your system. Okay, so we have to hurry a little bit. Um, so briefly, let's go through the codes. Like, uh, actually, everyone got, everyone got uh, this kind of soliton already? You got? Yes. Я уже сменил интерпретатор на Q2P. Он теперь загрузил? Да, Говорит, что он не может будут там какие-то ошибки с сессиями, что сериан не будет вообще не синхронизировать пока что. Окей. Just the process is the same. Um, no, I'm 
за комментарием тебе это все. Вот. А, тихо, 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 Okay, yeah. Uh, can you show us how to uh, move this line and oh, okay, see its breathing? Okay, so you go here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, no, no, you go here. Yeah. You got uh, Python, you got graphics. You show from inline uh, okay. to QD5. Okay, fly, okay. And reload this again and run, okay. Okay, perfect, almost. <laughs> Almost everyone got got solitons, yes. Okay, let's briefly let's briefly go through the code probably if we still have time. Or not, yeah. So Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, perfect. So let's let's go and see how it actually works. What's behind this line, which integrates everything? Like since it's uh, hmm, it's, it's quite simple on the sh like on the outside, but inside it's quite a bit of work to do. So basically, there are two approaches to this. So you can simulate your your cavity with split step method, which you've seen probably earlier during the super continuum session, or you use the kind of step adaptative Runge Kutta methods and so particularly uh, Steve is if uh, in the case is possible yes so uh, the, it's a perfect way so what 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 is there so here we create a class which is called resonator to this class you get resonator parameters yes so everything which, which we defined so we redefine in terms of class variables here it's quite just straightforward we recalculate something uh, here it's like but everything that you gave through this, uh, through this uh, kind of dictionary uh, when here as a parameter. So you construct your class using this, okay? Then you have a function which defines the noise. So yeah, it's on the right level. So how noise works in this case? So we got uniform distribution in imaginary and real parts. So they're delta correlated noise. So it kind of it mimics the the shot noise in a sense. So and here is the main function. It's like it's propagate function, which is like this this one uses step adaptive method. So effectively what you do, so this step adaptive method is designed for ordinary differential equations. Yes, but here we have a partial. And it really complicates our life. So uh, partial and complex at the same time, so our, our variables are complex. And what do we do? So we actually take every point in our box, like in every direction, yes, and we consider that actually the, uh, we, we, we go and say, okay, so dynamics in this particular place is defined by a certain equation, like LLE, just the right part of the LLE, and so we solve it for a set of, uh, of, of, of uh, we, we write an equivalent set of ODE equations uh, with the size of like how many points in our box, yeah, basically that's it. And we got a routine which solves this system of ordinary differential equations with the right part looks like LED for us, yes. So it's very effective method. So they are very well studied. Uh, it's like Rujikuta methods. And uh, what's good about this? The good part is following. So in a split step, you remember, you, you, got, you got to fix how far you tune further. Yeah? So you got your length of your waveguide, and you choose the step, how much do you go further, like each time. Yeah? But here, solver actually looks on the field evolution, and it estimates narrow. And if error is huge, so it decreases step for you. 
So you don't need to think about this. You have to fix probably the maximum number of steps it goes in order to not diverge. Yeah? But uh, for if, if your solver is appropriate, so uh, it should be stiff, it should be step adaptive, and it's gonna, gonna give, give a great job, actually. We're gonna do a great job because, uh, yeah, because actually stiffness is a parameter which, uh, which defines how far your function can change inside your evolution, uh, during your evolution. And if it's too much, so your solver should be a bit more complicated. Yeah, so, uh, and that, that can be a crucial point here. It should be really careful with this part. So, and uh, uh, there, is a, there is a thing. So, of course, everything is good, but it's costly. Yeah, so, it's time-consuming calculation, actually. So, they are, they are slower than split step, quite significantly. We didn't run, if I say, extensive tests like to compare the both, the two, but we know. So, if we want to be very, very precise and we want to go and we don't care about time, we want to have our final run for the publication, for example, we would try to use this because this gives us very, very good precision. It gives us, it's very robust. Yeah? But if we want to check something, we want to look at something, we use the split step method, which Miles described just this morning, I guess. Yes. So, and uh, this, this is fast and, and effective method, but it introduces significant errors. So if you want to be very precise, you have to have a very, very short step and it starts to be, again, very time consuming. But at the same time, you spend your time solving trivial parts. So you spend as much time for trivial parts, the same as for modulation stability, where everything is complex and high amplitude, yes? But you don't need to, yes? So that, that's, that's a choice always you do. So somewhere you lose, somewhere you gain. So. And uh, also important thing, so um, our solver, like for these step adaptive methods here. The, ah, actually, yes, here, this line is one of the things you can recognize right away, yeah? It's nothing but the right side of the Lujat Lefebvre equation. So I just write a function. Yeah, so, and I give this function to the solver, and actually now I know how my right hand side looks like. Yeah? And, uh, but the only one thing is important here, not only one, but it's crucial. So you can solve the, this equation in real or frequency domain, yes? And uh, there is a paper from Webniz, Stefan Webniz, who shows the equivalence, actually, of these approaches. So uh, kind of, you know, this couple mode equation, which I showed in the very beginning, so it's a very standard approach to the resonators. Uh, it can be written uh, in an equivalent way, like you can make a transform to get your LED equation from it. Yeah. But, uh, uh, what you should do, of course, if you work in, in Fourier space, you don't want to deal with this huge sum. Let, let me recall, recall you just how it looks like. Horrible thing. So, um, here. So, this sum, if you, if, you, if you have a look on this. Yeah, you remember. So, you, you don't want to go and make the real summation of every possible four-wave mixing. That's really time consuming. People did it with three or four, like a few few moles, yes? And it's, it was really already huge in time. It's, it's much slower than everything you do uh, with Lujat Lefebvre equation, like uh, even you, you, yeah. So, and uh, because we want to avoid this, so we go and we solve the kernel linearity because it's, it's nonlinear part, you cannot easily go and transfer. You, we solve it in a, in the real, real space. So that's um, the most complicated part probably about this solver. Uh, okay, uh, probably we don't have time to go deeper in these details, but uh, uh, another one method you know very well, so it's a, it's a split step method, yeah. So what, 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 what you, you, you know perfectly already, yes, how, how split step method works, who knows? Okay, just half of people probably. But uh, in brief, yeah, split step method in brief. So how, 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 do, how you should approach this kind of nonlinear calculation, uh, nonlinear dynamics calculation. So you can imagine, uh, I, I will give an example for nonlinear Schrodinger equation. So it's easy. You have evolution term, you have dispersion term, you have nonlinear term. Like once you have nonlinear term, your life is complicated. Yeah? So you, you cannot use just Fourier to have a nice solution of everything. So what you do, you say, okay, 
So if I consider a very, very short propagation distance, so I can assume that there works on the dispersion. On the next step of a short distance propagation, like works on the nonlinearity. And you go and put one after another, one after another, and you kind of approach the limit where you where you got your real dynamics. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a foundation of of Lajara, of of three step. Uh, so who 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 did not understand it before? Uh, let, let, let's discuss. What, how, 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 did, did, is it clear actually? Okay. Who, who said who did not get it from the beginning? Okay. Uh, yeah, who does now? That's the question. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So uh, and yes, so we don't we don't do many things. So we go and we simulate one part, uh, well, the linear part, linear parts separately, uh, one after another. Yeah, in the loop. So we got what short step. We consider linear dynamics. Short step. We consider linear dynamics. And yeah, but uh, apparently you have to fix your step, and that's what I was talking about. Once you fix your step, so you, you get a corresponding error. If you want to have very, very precise simulations, you have to f make a very, very short step. Yeah, so, and uh, that can, can be easily checked. So actually, the equivalence is quite nice because we wrote the split step in real space and step adaptive in free space. But OK, uh, it's a choice. But look, what, if, what happens if I just stay here, yes, and I, I go and I take, it's exactly the step parameter. And I change it to, to minus two, yes. So like 10 to the power minus two. And it's very fast, you see? It's very fast. But it's very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so there is no, nothing. Oh. Yeah, so if you look on the transmission trace, <laughs> it's just a joke, yes. Like it's, it's totally not physical. Oh, uh, I mean, you, you can see it. and. <laughs> Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna be sure that your simulations are right, so what you have to do is to actually decrease the step until nothing changes. Yeah, so you you converge to a certain certain solution. That that's that's the way you check all these kind of simulations. And uh, just to play the last thing, yeah, uh, if you go to the folder, which is called never stop. And you download all these three files, you put them in the folder. <laughs> yeah, you open this file. Oh, we have it here also. Just a second. Okay, wherever. So do you have it open? Yeah, everyone had? I have. Not yet, yeah? Okay, we'll wait another two minutes. I'm sorry? Okay. So it it works, you say. I'm a bit behind. Oh, okay. So, uh, well, we will share. We will share stuff. Don't worry. Yeah, you can ask any question then. Okay. So, please raise your hands. Who opened it? I see. So I don't start yet. Okay. Okay. Sasha, can you help, please, to people? Because uh, half of people never op yes. didn't open it. Just uh, download the step. And so, yeah, you can, you can, you can explore the stability chart by yourself just by clicking on the map. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, OK. So I show you just, just a bit of attention, just a sec. I, I will show you how it works. And then you can play for a few minutes with yourself. So it's quite fun. It's quite fun. So you remember this stability diagram, yeah? Just, just, just have a look on the, on the left. Yeah? yeah. So what uh, what we've written there, just for educational purpose and for fun, of course, so is that it's a solver which always works. So these things is computed live now. So it's computing all the time, and these are your parameters. So now you are here somewhere here. 
Yeah? So I click on certain position. On this face diagram, you got a red cross. This means you are here right now. Yeah? And your parameters are moving to this direction. OK, so I want to explore this chart and what I do. So I go and, for example, I click here. I click here, and you see my solver started to solve all these equations live. And what you got? You got growing all these kind of spectral components, yeah? And here is the periodical Turing patterns, which appear right away. So you see, it's all, it's all live. So you can go in any direction and see how it works. So they are stable. That's written stable in my Turing rules. That's, that's what it gets, yeah? And so I, I go and I, I, I make next step, like up, and I go to the unstable region. And we have to wait probably a little bit. Okay, so you're getting unstable. So you got to the chaotic state, and that's exactly what you expected. That's a modulation instability state. Yeah. So you just go there. Okay. So what I want now? I want to get solid, of course. Yeah. That's the best part of the story. So I go there. I tune because um, actually it's not perfect. So we did not implement a slow change of parameters. It's fast. So it's it, it jumps to the state. So it's which is not really not not really good, but. Uh, in a way, in a way, it works. Yes. Yeah, so you got to the stable soliton state. Okay, so, and I, I have a last point here on the stability diagram, the one we call breezers, and we call them breezers for a reason. <laughs> yeah, because they are stable, but they're always doing, the, they're always oscillating, they are breezing. That's why they actually got this name. So you can see. And I, I can go further, and I can get even higher amplitude breezers until I go to the next chaotic stage. Yeah. Uh, it's a, you're tuning into the resonance, yes, you have to. Because you, you see, if you're, you, you get in a sudden change of the, of the parameters, so you can actually... I can't go from here to here directly then. Like if I'm here and if I click here directly, you can see well, how it works. Yeah, you, you you will see this kind of. You go to the continuous wave, your continuous wave level will increase suddenly. Yeah, so your resonance is like that. Your, your continuous wave is increasing. So you're in the upper. I think you're going to be on the upper part of your visibility diagram, and it's going to be destroyed. Yeah, you can see how it works. Actually, it's a funny thing. No, there are no thermal effects, yes. Yeah. go up. Try to go to the next, like, trench and trench and chaos in this part. You, you will try to, yes? I'm sorry? Why is it that the operation is not committed? Operation is not committed, my gosh. Where? where? Can, can I? That the operation is not permitted. Oh. 
probably your files are in other in in a not in your user directory, no? Uh, like probably it's in a part of the of the of your Mac which you don't have direct access or something like this, no? I don't know exactly. Okay. Uh, actually, guys, I think uh, that's the end of the lecture part, and we slowly move to the exercise session. And then we, we still keep our hands on the keyboard, so you will, you will need to program maybe even something today. But uh, that's our, on this point, our lecture is first part, at least is over. Thank you. Yeah.